Salutations and welcome to another episode of The Gamer's Experience. I am your host, Phil Willis, and welcome to The Gamer's Experience. It's more than a review. It's less than a Let's Play. It's just me going through my favorite 100 uh, PC games in chronological order. And uh, at the end of last show, uh, which was about uh, D&D's Dark Sun uh, PC game, I mentioned that I was uh, going to do another Dungeons & Dragons game next. Uh, but... We've kind of changed my mind on that. We've had a couple of new games kind of come out since then, and it's made me reevaluate some of my list, and I had to uh, rearrange and change a couple of things. So, on the bright side, uh, I'm excited that uh, the next game on the list, as a result of some of this reshuffling and moving a couple of things out, is, uh, is, is now Heroes of Might and Magic is on the list. And, you know, in thinking, uh, you know, Heroes of Might and Magic is the first uh, series I think we've hit that is really spread out. I mean, we've talked about the Gold Box D&D games um, back in, um, yeah, back a few episodes ago. And that was a series of nine games, but they all really pretty much, for the most part, came out really close to each other. When we get into Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, that originally came out, uh, well, we're going to look it up in a minute, but I want to say the original one was 1996, 95. Uh, we'll look it up. But uh, though they're still making those games to this day, Ubisoft, and Ubisoft now has the rights to those. And I believe they're working on Heroes of Might and Magic 7 right now. So it's pretty it's pretty spread out for, uh, you know, a series of games. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, since I'm trying to do this in chronological order, do, uh, do I base it off of, you know, w w where I order it on the list? Do I pick... The first game that came out, the second game, my favorite, do I use that date? You know, there's definitely some things going through my head. And all I can tell you guys is this isn't going to be super scientific. So don't go back and check my facts and go, well, this game really came out before this one. And, and uh, yeah, no, uh, it, it's going to be a little confusing if, you, if you're trying to follow it that closely. Uh, for Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, you know, the second and the third game are really central. They're really the best of the series. Uh, four and five has its strong suit. Six, I did not care for at all. Uh, Ubisoft, since they've taken it over, has, has not been too kind to it. I don't have high hopes for seven. Um, so uh, this show today is really going to focus on uh, number two and number three. Um, and, and they, uh, number two came out, uh, I want to say, let's take a look here. We have it pulled up in 1996. So if we're, if we're using that as the date, this, this is where it really fits really well in the series. It does go chronological. It is after, uh, Dark Sun and before the next game that's on, on the list there. So that works out really well. But we're going to spend the bulk of the time, we're going to talk about two. I'm going to show you some really cool things from two. But we're also going to spend the bulk of the time uh, talking about um, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic number three. So, And that came out later on, in originally in 1999. Sad, but I thought about, should I do two different shows? And no, nah, it really is kind of the same series. And they really do tie in like this. Uh, so this is where it's going to be at. I, I, and, and I'm super excited because it really is in my top 20, maybe even my top 10 uh, games of all time. And that's saying something because I've played a, a lot of games. So let's talk about, uh, let's start off talking about Heroes of, of Might and Magic uh, 2. This is developed by New World uh, Computing, published by uh, 3DO Company. And this was released originally October 1st, 1996. Uh, now, I played the Gold Edition, which came out a year or two later, uh, which which also included the expansion pack, The the Price of Loyalty. And if you don't know, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic uh, is a turn-based strategy video game uh, that has uh, some RPG elements in it. Now, mo many people I talk to are more familiar with Might and Magic, the role-playing game series, especially... I believe it was uh, Might and Magic 4 and 5, which was the uh, World of Zine. Uh, that came out on multiple platforms, and so a lot of people are, are pretty familiar with that. But the Heroes of Might and Magic are, are kind of a turn-based, uh, almost a Civ kind of like exploration board game that uh, not everyone knows about, but I really wish they did, because it is really, really, really super fun. Uh, and
and, 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 and I'm going to show you why. I'm absolutely positively going to show you why. This is going to be a, a long video. You might want to play this on one and a quarter, one and a half speed. You can do that there in YouTube because I'm going to give you a lot of history here, uh, with, with not starting with number two, but you're also going to get a, a good chunk of gameplay footage because I really, really want you to see what this game is all about because it's not something you typically find off the shelf especially if you're a console gamer. Uh, there was a, a couple of games like it. Uh, King's Bounty came out before Heroes of Might and Magic. is a predecessor to the Heroes of Might and Magic series. And I believe uh, King's Bounty, a couple of iterations of that have come out on the platforms, but they've never been big sellers. They've never been very popular, uh, and they weren't uh, that well done either. So uh, very few people, again, have actually seen this and played this. Now, what I like to normally do, those of you who've been on these uh, shows with me before, I like to show you some of the uh, some of the collateral that comes with the game. It comes with this nice, beautiful, juicy manual. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to that in just a minute here because it is big and it is huge uh, and whatnot. So here we go. We got the Heroes of Might and Magic uh, Gold, and this is the PDF. You get this. You get this with uh, whenever you buy the game from here. Uh, by the way, this is. Let me start over. <laughs> this game is on sale. Uh, at GOG or for sale at GOG.com along with just about every one of the games before um, Ubisoft took it over. I believe you can get one through five uh, on there. When you buy two or three uh, it comes with all the expansions which is very very nifty. So you also get the PDFs of the instruction books and as you can tell here at the top here this is a hundred and some odd pages so this is really really beefy. I like to use that word a lot beef. Must be hungry. Must be time for dinner soon. Uh, but here, you know, just uh, lots and lots of detail. Um, and of course, I'd like to, to, to um, tell you that, uh, well, now, so it tells you about some of the difference between Heroes of Might and Magic uh, 1 and 2 right here on the first. Now, I don't, I don't jump right into Heroes of Might and Magic 1. I, I played it uh, after the fact, then, uh, from the magic of GOG. And two is very similar to one, except better in just about you know every respect. Uh, now, when we compare two and three, we're gonna we're gonna go over some things that two does better, that three does better, and they're both really excellent games. And there's some fair trades for either you know depending on which one you play. But the difference between one and two, you just want to go straight to two. Uh, it just it's just really that much better. So that that's what I definitely recommend. Um, so uh, you got more races to pick from, as it points out. Combat has more hexes, which really helps because the, the battlegrounds and, and the original Heroes of Might Magic was, was really small. Uh, towns have more defenses, uh, and uh, creatures can be uh, upgraded, becoming faster, tougher, and with more abilities, which, which can definitely be important. Uh, just, just more options uh, all the way around. Uh, so uh, it's going to give you some instructions. It's in the, the tutorial is actually here in the instruction uh, book, and it will if you follow these pages carefully, it will take you through how to play the game. Um, we're, if you just watch me play this here, you'll you'll get enough of a tutorial just by watching me. You don't have to go through all of this. But this uh, this is it back in the days where they didn't build the tutorial directly into the game, so they had to talk you through it through instructions. But as you go through all these pages, there's lots of details, which can be very helpful considering this is a strategy game. You'll want to know what a lot of these uh, choices uh, do uh, as you're making them. Now, the game gives you numbers inside of the game. You don't necessarily have to keep yourself glued onto the manual, but it does help a lot. So I'm just going to kind of flip through this because we are talking hundreds of pages, but it does a good job of explaining exactly how the game works and what every single building uh, does. Uh, and giving it uh, giving it more detail than what you get with the mouse overs uh, in the game, so you wanna you know you wanna read on that, including telling you you know what some of the uh, skill numbers do, like attack. The higher the attack rate, the more damage the creature inflicts in combat. The number in parentheses of the attack skill of the creature with the hero's defense skill added in. Uh, for more information on the attack skill, see combat. So I wonder if that's a typo. I think it's supposed to be the attacks skill of the hero added in, not the hero's defense skill added in. Um, so I think that's a bit of a typo there because your hero's attack and defense values will get added in. So every army you, is led by one of your heroes and there's skill points added in with the other characters. There's lots of skills that you can that your hero can learn along the way too as we're going to see in the game. 
and this uh, this instruction book will tell you exactly uh, what those different things do. Again, uh, there's mouse overs that kind of explain this, uh, but this is just giving you more detail. And then later on, I'm going to kind of zip over here to the spells. Uh, spe so in combat, you're going to be able to use spells as you're going to see, and uh, this one shows you uh, more details on what uh, what the sp what the spells do. Uh, your heroes have spell power, and the spell power affects differently for every spell. For example, uh, bless uh, causes your creature to inflict maximum damage instead of a random value, and it lasts for one round per point of power uh, your spellcaster has. Whereas uh, a spell like cure removes all negative spells and heals for five times your power and hit points on the creature. So, uh, yeah, spells could definitely come in handy. And there's two types of heroes, as you might imagine, imagine in a game called Heroes of Might and Magic. There is Heroes of Might and Heroes of Magic. So for your magical heroes, you'll want to become familiar uh, with these spells and what they do. Later on, you get mass versions like Mass Bless and Mass Curse that can you know, and, uh, cause all of your creatures to do maximum damage uh, and the such. So all of that is right here tells you what a lot of it does you can even summon guardians to add to your armies uh you can teleport back to the town just a lot of cool spells armageddon does all kinds of damage to creatures including your own uh, resurrection uh will resurrect uh killed units uh some very powerful spells and then you get into uh the creatures and uh what uh, you know this is this is very important because the the mouse over in the game gives you the statistics but it doesn't give you this text here like for example a wolf has two attacks and it says wolves are incredibly offensive units but they need to be used carefully because they cannot take damage well that two attacks is really super important as most things only get one attack so having that little piece of information is very very helpful um now the game comes with i'm gonna open this up real quick here but the game also comes with this creature table uh, that I that we would use a lot here. Uh, and when I bought the game, I had this with me almost all the time. It's got all your statistics and stuff, and all that's with a mouse over. But it just kind of lets you see all your creatures lined up um, in order, uh, different uh, categories and the such. Now, one thing I like to point out when we're looking at these is that the races are very asymmetrical. So, for example, if you pick the Barbarian, their early races are, are, are their early creatures are, are, are a bit tough. A wolf's very offensive, for example, and such. Um, but your higher creatures, uh, like the Cyclops and the War Troll here, only have, you know, 40 hit points and 80 hit points. Uh, now compare that to, let's say, the Warlock, where the higher creatures here have 75, 200, and there's even a Black Dragon with 300 hit points. So the warlock definitely uh, scales up uh, faster, but their units, uh, their 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 armies, as you can see, you know, on the grids here, are a lot more expensive. So uh, they're harder to get upgraded. They're harder to get up the chain, but they can go a lot higher overall. So if you're playing a barbarian, you want to be very aggressive early on and not give the other races time to get into their higher end units, uh, or you want to get a lot of um, towns early to build bigger armies but uh, if you're playing a warlock you can afford to take a little bit more of your time even the knight uh, their lowest level creatures the peasant wing has one hit point the crusader which is the highest one has 65 hit points so definitely like i mentioned before very uh, asymmetrical the, the races vary uh, greatly from one another and then you have like the uh, paths of upgrading here which i don't look at this too much because the game pretty much tells you what you can and you cannot do um, as you're building up your castle but that is a quick reference guide now the one thing the reference guide really lacks though is telling me what these special abilities are and that's where you really have to go back to the instruction book right here to see oh, okay well you know in an uh, ogre lord uh you know has upgraded hit points and speed which isn't a big deal but uh do, 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 do. but some of these upgrades are are, are very uh, big like for example so the archer and the ranger, you know, the, okay, the statistics are about the same. The cost is more, but the this little bit of text means a lot. Fires the ranger fires two shots per turn. The archer only fires uh, one strike. So little details like that, super important, and you're going to see that in my in Magic Three. And knowing what those are, knowing what those differences are, uh, will help you make the the decisions on whether or not to upgrade them. So very important. Um, 
but yeah, all those statistics are, are right there for you to look over and read and become familiar uh, with the different uh, types of creatures. And then we get into different uh, buildings and what they do. Again, the mouse overs pretty much tells you a lot of this, but it's nice that it's all written here with pretty pictures uh, that you can look at or print out or whatever. So, and then it gives you information about the editor. There is an in-game in map editor. I've never played around too much, too much with it, a little bit. But uh, there's a huge community for Heroes of Might and Magic uh, 2 and 3 uh, with lots of custom-made maps. So the, the, the map editors gave the game a lot of legs, uh, gave it a lot of length, legs, whatever. <laughs> because people are still making stuff to this day. And there's a huge modding community out for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. There's an unofficial expansion, which actually adds a whole other level of units and, and all kinds of different... Uh, levels of depth and stuff. Uh, I've downloaded it. I've never actually farted around a whole lot with it because the base game in and of itself is so, so deep uh, that it, you could just spend uh, so much time in it. So that's kind of the instructions for Heroes of Might and Magic. Thought y'all would like to see that. And, and Might and Magic 2. Might and Magic uh, 3, which uh, we'll play later on, uh, we could get into, we could go ahead and take a look at those manuals now. Not a whole lot of difference, actually. You do have uh, the the creature compendiums. I'll flip over to that for Heroes of My Magic 3. And you'll see it's very similar. Uh, and <laughs> even to the point of not telling you what the special things are when you upgrade uh, different units. But your Creek Reference Guy looks very, very similar. Now, the races in Heroes of Might and Magic 3, uh, the races are still different, but they're closer to being symmetrical. Every race has, uh, for the most part, I believe, has a flyer, a couple of fast units, uh, a range unit, if not two or three. But th there's a lot more symmetry uh, in the races. The difference between the biggest units is a little bit closer. The Behemoth and the Stronghold is 300 hit points. The Titan is 300. Uh, the Phoenix is 200, but it resurrects itself, so go figure that one out. Um, Arch Devil's 200. Uh, I can't remember what keeps him alive, if something keeps him alive. But yeah, I think the lowest one is the 200, but the highest one's 300. So the gap is much closer than where we had, you know, 50 hit points versus 300 hit points uh, it, with similar attack powers and stuff. So a little bit more symmetry on the races there. And very similar, we'll flip over to. Uh, the manual. Now I have three manuals here because Heroes of Might and Magic 3 had two expansions as well as the base game. And there's just, again, there's just so much to these manuals here. Uh, there's an introduction, and, uh, and but you'll find a, find a similar layout. You'll find uh, very detailed instructions. Uh, you will eventually find pages explaining to you all the spells, uh, all of the uh, the different icons and what they do uh, and explain all the different troop types you know it's it's all there here's the spells telling you exactly uh, what each level of spell does as well because in this game uh in heroes of might and magic 3 you can get you can become expert different levels of expertise in each school of magic so whereas in heroes of might and magic 2 you had bless and mass bless and bless was like level one and mass bless was level three and it was just a matter of getting a level three guild in a, in a class that could cast level three spells uh in heroes of might and magic three uh, regular bless basically does what it does in heroes of might and magic two but to get the mass bless you gotta become a master of water magic and uh, uh that will allow the spell to affect everybody so it's a kind of a different setup but pretty cool none nonetheless now, the book is also super important for telling you what the different creature types do. And I'll try to zoom in on this so you can see it a little better. But uh, the uh, angels and archangels are a really, really great example. So in Heroes of Might and Magic 3, every creature has an upgrade. Every single one. But some of these upgrades are just small statistical upgrades, whereas other ones are significant statistical upgrades or even get some really cool special abilities. And the top level um, unit of the... Uh, of the human city, the angel, he gets upgraded to an archangel. And you gotta read the text over here. I mean, you can see the statistical difference. They're pretty big. But you gotta read the text over here to see, oh, well, wait a minute. So both do 150% damage when attacking devils, but the archangel is able to resurrect dead allied troops once per combat. And, and that's really huge uh, when you're trying to protect your units from dying, which we'll discuss in the game. So 
uh, those small little details can really, really matter and help you decide which ones uh, you want to upgrade first and which ones you maybe never want to upgrade. So, Harpies, the second level uh, creature of the dungeon, for example. Uh, the Harpy uh, the harpy Hags, which are the upgraded ones, cannot be counterattacked. Most units, when they attack, they get counterattacked when they attack melee, but not the Harpy Hags. So that's probably worth upgrading for in and of itself. So... Uh, you want to you wanna spend a little bit of time getting to know the creatures of whatever city you're playing, and you can do that right here uh, in the instruction book uh, if you're not looking at some sort of wiki page. But you know, nothing shows you the game like jumping in and uh, playing it. So uh, we're going to do that here. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea. Uh, so we'll be right back, and we're going to jump right into a game. Uh, we'll start off with a quick showing you uh, some Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Uh, and then I want to show you an entire game of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Don't worry, I picked a small board uh, that's pretty short as far as these things go. Uh, and it should only take me about, I don't know, not too, too long. But you'll get to see the entire upgrade process and some good, good fights uh, through that. So we'll be right back, so hold on tight. And we have returned with... Heroes of Might and Magic, the price of loyalty expansion included. It's loading up here. Hi. Pump the roof. Pump the roof. It's Heroes of Might and Magic. Woohoo! Well, okay. This is probably the first game outside of Final Fantasy VI that I really, really enjoyed the, the soundtrack on. Um, this is just something that to this day I like to just pop in sometimes and just listen to this. Turn that up for a little bit. So as you can hear there, it's, it's pretty cool. I turn that down a little bit so I can talk with y'all and hear myself think as I've already got kind of a map already loaded up here. So this, you know, there's so many options here. You can start off a new game. You can go for a standard game, which is just a single map. Uh, you can go for the campaign. There's an evil campaign, a good campaign. There's probably one for the expansion, I don't remember. But yeah, original campaign, expansion campaign. So those are really fun to go through. Um, uh, but if you go for a new game, you go for a standard game. There's just tons and tons of maps to just pick from here. Mind you, these are just the ones that came with the original game, and then there's the expansion as well. Um, so a lot to a lot to pick from there. Um, I've already kind of got one started, so I can jump right into this, because I don't want to spend uh, too too much time on Heroes of Might and Magic 2. I want to save the bulk of my time for the third one. So I like that one just a tiny bit more, but I really like this one a lot too. So this is what the map looks like at the beginning. Most maps will look at the beginning. So uh, this is the mini map right here. And you can see we've got some area to cover. And this is a, a smaller uh, map. Uh, you're starting off with the castle. I have chose the Necromancer race because I really enjoy them. And you can click on this and go inside your town. And you start off with this meager castle. You got a little... Um, uh, graveyard here. You can recruit some zombies and some skeletons from here uh, and the such. So usually what I'll do is I'll take the, uh, the the hero you start off with has a few soldiers. She has six skeletons and two zombies. And what you'll notice here is with your armies, there's little numbers. They're teeny tiny. Hopefully you can see them here on YouTube. But uh, this one says six, this one says two. And that means I have six skeletons and two zombies. Um... Here's my attack skill, my defense skill, my spell power, and my knowledge. Uh, attack skill helps me uh, when I'm attacking people. It makes my uh, troops' attacks hit harder. Defense helps them, obviously, to reduce damage. Spell power, as I mentioned before, dictates how those spells, you know, how powerful those spells will hit. And then knowledge dictates how many spell points you have. You've also got uh, morale up here. The more morale your troops have, the more often they'll get uh, an opportunity to act again. 
and then you have luck, which uh, affects your ability to critical, your army's ability to do critical strikes for extra damage. And then you'll have any number of skills uh, down here. So Wisdom Basic, if you click on that, it says, hey, you can learn up to third level spells. So a lot of the, the, the instructions you need, like I said before, it's kind of right, right in there. And uh, Basic Necromancy allows you to, uh, allows 10% of the creatures killed in combat to be brought back to the dead as skeletons, which is your base troop, which is actually kind of fun. And then we have spell book. we have no spells yet. So I like to take the hero, go into town. It's not a bad idea just to go off, since she is kind of a caster type. Uh, go ahead and, uh, if you can afford it, these are the different buildings you can buy. And you can buy a mage guild. And that mage guild will in turn give you these spells. And ooh, slow is a good one. That's good for slowing down the enemy, as we'll see in combat. While we're here, go ahead and recruit up some creatures. And these are our resources right here. We've got wood, sulfur, crystal, um, mercury, uh, stone, gems, and gold, which we need to recruit creatures. So we're gonna recruit uh, some creatures here. Now, one of the things you can also do in town is you can recruit uh, another commander. I usually I like to have two, one to take the lead and maybe one or two other ones to help scout out and to pick things up. So, uh, and you wanna pick the, the one that is the same class as what you already have. So we're playing a necromancer. We'd rather have Raldo the necromancer rather than Tasabu the barbarian. So go ahead, pay the 2,500 gold. Pretty much makes us broke at this point. But he comes with some beginning creatures. Now, one of the basic strategy in Heroes of Might Magic that works a lot in Civ and the such is uh, the bigger their armor is, the much more likely it is to win. So rather than having two medium-sized armies or small armies at this point, we're going to go ahead and have these two talk to each other. And in this screen, they can trade equipped items uh, and armies. So we can actually give his zombies to her and most of his skeletons. You have to at least keep one skeleton in his party. So right there. So now he has almost no army. He has only one skeleton. And our lead character has a, a little bit of a bigger army here. So um, we, uh, so with her, we will, we will attack. But with him, we will use him to pick up stuff and, and what have you. And I see up here, this little corner right here, I can see a, a, a lumber mill. So if I go up there, uh, luckily there's nothing guarding it. We're going to see some things later on that have guards. So I'm going to leave that for him to pick up. And I'm going to send her in another direction to see if there's something for her to fight. In the meantime, send them up here, pick up the wood. And he runs out of movement points pretty quickly, so both their turns are used up. And when you're done with your turn, just like Civilization, you hit the end turn button. The enemies take their turn, and it's back to you again. And thankfully the computer takes its turn rather quickly for the most part. Now, this, uh, if you mouse over, this is a sawmill, and a sawmill produces two wood a day if you flag it. So if you go up to here, it says you gain control of the sawmill. It provides you with two units of wood per day. So I'm going to get that steady income as long as my blue flag stays on it. Now over here, there's a pack of orcs. So if I want to go past there, I'd have to beat up those orcs, which he can't do because he only has one skeleton. She could try, um, but orcs are kind of tough, so I'm going to save those for later just bring him down here to collect the gold. Uh, she gets a campfire, has some treasure, some 600 gold and six wood. So early on you're collecting a lot of stuff. Now there's a little a little hole over here. And uh, that's a halfling hole. And if you go over there, which I can't at this turn because I've moved right out of movement again. Both of my heroes have moved. They're out of movement. The yellow bar here would be how many movement they have left and they're both empty. So uh, before I end my turn, though, I want to go to my castle because you can build one thing every day if you got enough resources to buy it. So uh, there's different things you can buy. Uh, you can upgrade the graveyard, which will give you mutant zombies, which we'd have to look at that card to see exactly what their statistics and what they do. Um, I can build a pyramid, which will produce mummies, which sounds like an awesome thing to have. We'd like to have more troops there and we'll need it anyways to start building bigger and better things so let's go ahead and build a, a pyramid and you can see how it adds to the to the city there it starts looking a little bit less sparse got a pyramid in the background so that's pretty cool and it comes with a few mummies i could go ahead and recruit right away 
I'm gonna hold on to that thought for just a minute because I have no one there to... Well, I can go ahead and hire them. And they'll be there to guard the town if someone was to attack the town. And that's the end of the turn. So, it says a bunch of... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to click through so fast, but it said a bunch of halflings have a desire to join you. They're silly halflings to want to join a bunch of undead creatures, but why not? Halflings are ranged attackers. They're rather weak, but they'll get us started. So we'll go ahead and take that offer. Um, and we have an ore mine up here with some ore, which we'll use him to collect after he collects this gold. One of the cool things about this game is exploration. You just never know what you're going to find around the bin. Um, all kinds of trinkets to pick up, resources, uh, weapons, items. And this observation tower will help us see everything around us. So we can see here we got some pikemen, which are rather tough. We got some rogues here, which are too, too tough. Um, and they're guarding a couple of things. So we can start planning out our next moves. Oh, and we have an artifact down there, which we should probably go get. So part of the game is, to, you know, is deciding what you want to attack. I played this before, and I know, you know, rogues aren't too tough. If I wasn't sure, I'd have to look up the, the book. Um, to see exactly how many hit points and what their attack is. I'm pretty sure I can handle those rogues, so I'm gonna go after them and show you guys some combat. So here's your typical combat screen. I got my halflings, my zombies, my skeletons. And you'll see that the AI loves to go for your ranged troops here. Uh, I like to turn on the grid option and the shadow option so I can see where I can go. Um, that usually works. Speed, fast, monster info. Like some monster info. Hmm. Not sure why I'm not seeing the shadow for him, but if you mouse over, you see where the skeletons go and where they don't. Now, we have spells. So haste, my skeletons can't quite reach those rogues, but haste would make my skeleton move faster, which would probably be very helpful here. Another cool thing about haste is it also, if you're moving faster, you'll go first uh, or sooner in combat, too. They're fast, his speed is slow, very slow, average. So if I go haste him, there, I can see a little bit of a shadow, but now he's very fast. So he's actually faster than them, which means he'll get to go first next round. Oh, great, the halfling skipped a turn because of low morale. Because when you're with undead, that lowers the morale of living creatures. So, yeah, they're a little depressed. And by the way, you can only cast one spell per round, so I can't cast another spell there. Um, but now it's a new round, I think, because it's a skeleton's turn again. So now I can... I can, um... Probably haste this guy up, so hopefully he gets a turn sooner. So now he's a fast speed. He'll get to go at the same time as the rogues. I think if it's the same time, it's whoever's towards the top of the screen. I'm not super sure on that, but... The thing does some math. And my rogues got kind of hit there for eight of them. Um, and once something's close up to your range unit like that, they can't use a ranged weapon and they only do half as much damage. Which kind of sucks. Oh no, they killed some skeletons. But the game shows you at the bottom there how many you kill and, and how much of yours takes damage. How much of your troops take damage. Which unfortunately my my ro my halflings are getting torn up. But there we go. What is kinda cool is being a necromancer, some of these rogues will come back as new skeletons. So definitely part of the game is trying to figure out ways to preserve the creatures you have. It's not unusual to go through a fight like that and go, hmm, maybe I could have done it better. Let me reload that turn. When the game does have, like, I think it's auto-save, um, you know, every turn. So if I do an auto-save and I'm like, huh, maybe I should do that a little bit better. So here I'm at the end of the last turn, I can, I can do that over again. And one of the things I might want to do there is just put my, well, once I get the halflings, put them on one side of the corner so they're a little bit harder for the rogues to get to. And they're a little bit more protected. Now I have another save game here. Let me pull that up for you guys. I'm trying to turn this down just a little bit more. This is just bugging me a little bit on the headset here. And let's load up. 
Uh, let's see here. Original map. Uh, let's open up this guy here. So this was just a little bit further on. Um, I've uh, At this point, I've gotten up to the next level creature. I've gotten some vampires. Still got a bunch of halflings somehow, miraculously. Uh, they've managed to stay alive. Don't ask me how. Let's see. Speed average. Speed average. Speed average. Okay. So put the halflings off there on the side. Um, but you see I got this artifact here, which increases my defense skill by one. And so we're a little bit further along, but I want to show you, here's the town now more fleshed out. I've played a few more turns, at least another, what, what week are we on here? I'll tell you how many turns I played. Uh, so we played about 12 more turns. And we have the Vampire Mansion. Uh, we have a Thieves Guild, which lets you see how you're ranking compared to other heroes that are playing against you. Um, and a few other toys. Now, I don't have the Mausoleum yet, which lets you produce liches, which are liches uh, throw clouds of death. They're a ranged unit. And laboratories will let you get the bone dragons. So I don't have those yet. Darminu's crying again. Just ignore her. She likes to meow a lot. She likes to meow a metric ton. Let's see here. Okay, so I gave up and, and fed the kitty cat. I've loaded up a, a game now, the same game, but I've moved a little bit further ahead so you can kind of see um, what things look like a little bit further into the future here. As we got most of the, more of the town built up at this point, we, uh, we, you can see with more of the buildings, we get more of the humor of the game. So much humor in this game. You now have a haunted mansion where you can recruit vampires because, of course, that's where they always hang out at. Um, we have that pyramid in the back that we had built earlier, but just... We got the Eats Guild uh, statue, which uh, increases town income and the such. So, um, it, it's just it's just pretty funny. And here's our main hero lady here. And as we're exploring, uh, trying to determine what to go next, you, you kind of make God make some tough choices here. Um, as you play the game more, you'll become more familiar with what's really tough and what isn't at different stages in the game. Range units, the Grand Elves here, are range units that fire twice. Uh, and, and those can be pretty painful. Um, this early stage of the game, especially with only a few vampires as flyers, um, I, I don't want to tackle them. I'll probably get my ass kicked. Um, there's lots of veteran pikemen. Lots means, like, dozens. Um, and veteran pikemen are pretty tough, so I'm probably not ready to fight those just yet. We have a pack of orcs over here, which we could probably handle those. But we got this nice neutral town here that doesn't seem to have too, too much. It's got question marks over everything, so I mean, it could be a ton of griffins for all we know. Um, but we'll want to go and uh, we we'll want to go and fight the, you know, figure out what we want to fight. Uh, admittedly, if there there's a couple of weaknesses with the game, and one of them is that sometimes it just seems easier uh, just to just uh, you know to go up and fight something, and if it ends up being too tough, just to reload the save game. Um, which I did a lot in Civ as well. So you, you, you definitely load a lot of save games. Uh, I'm going to pass a couple of days here so I get a new uh, stash of creatures to recruit before I go and attack that town. Because so as you can see right here, we're on week two, day seven. On the first day of each week, you get uh, new creatures in your castle to recruit. Uh, plus you're getting a couple of extra dates of income. As you see though, the computer's not resting on its laurels too much. It's exploring and gathering stuff. So I can come here now. And first, actually, what I want to do is take my, my runner guy here, my scout, and I'm going to use him to transport troops. So we're going to buy everything that's there that's available to hire. So we click on those different things. We have different things we can... Yeah, I actually clicked on the marketplace where you trade goods. It's right there you get those skeletons. And so I'm going to bring those down over here. And I'm going to go up to this character, my main hero character here. And just give all the troops over. You can trade items between characters, troops just like that, leave them with one skeleton so he can walk around. And now we can take her and go and attack this this town here. As you see I've already been here before I flagged the sulfur. I mean uh, the Mercury. There is some elves guarding uh, this gems here, which I could use some gems. 
Uh, I've got 14 already. I just want the town. So I can show y'all a, a big fight if nothing else. And we'll stick the scout back in town, or we can have him go around and collect if there's anything more to collect. Doesn't seem to be anything lying around really for him to do so. Oh, there's a treasure chest right here. Go ahead and end that turn. And as we look over the, the troops that she has here, let me point this out here. We got uh, we've got the range troop with the halflings, which are pretty pretty weak. They're first level troops, so I don't expect them to live a lot longer. We have vampires, which are flyers, and then we have zombies, skeletons, and mummies. And these are walkers. So there's three different troop types in Heroes of Might and Magic. Your walkers, uh, your flyers, and your range guys. Your walkers, generally speaking, are good against flyers, who are generally speaking good against range dudes, who are generally speaking good against walkers. And it's not because they do extra damage or anything like that. Walkers just tend to be beefier and tougher. Not always. First level walkers are still pretty weak compared to seventh level flyers, of course. But, I mean, pound for pound, they tend to be tougher. Uh, but slower. The flyers are, are fast, but if they get caught by the walkers, they'll take a lot of damage. But they can get right into the range troops' face. And most range troops, when they're summoned in melee range, can't use the range weapons. Uh, so they use like a little dagger that does half damage, so they're they're not quite as effective. But they're pretty good against the walkers because they can get a few shots in before the walkers can reach them. At least most walkers. So with that in mind, let's go and attack this town up here. So this is their garrison, and the town has no defenses. Otherwise, we'd see the moat, we'd see walls. Uh, you can even have things shooting arrows at you. Of course, it goes right after the poor defenseless halflings. That's okay. Halflings are little troops. They, they were never long for this world anyways. So we'll use our uh, mutant zombies to attack. And we killed off a couple of gargoyles there. But notice that the uh, mutant zombies, they I lost one of them there. Uh, they took a hit. Um, once a unit counterattacks, it can't counterattack again in the same round unless it's special. Some creatures can, like Hydra, I think. But not gargoyles. So uh, that means if I attack with my skeletons now... I won't get the counterattack. Well, and of course he would go after that. Let me haste up these mummies so they can get up there quickly and join the fight. Let them walk faster. Spells can give you a strategic, even if you're not playing a caster characters, spells can clearly give you a strategic edge in battle. So, use your spells. So the flyers, as I mentioned before, are good against ranged attackers. And I'm gonna turn this up here. So I want you to listen. I want you to listen to the vampires when they attack. It's hilarious. You hear that? It's like he goes bleh, bleh, like some B-rate movie. It is hilarious. Um, you can just space bar skip your turn, which I'll do with the halflings, because they'll just die in the counterattack anyways. Have the mummies attack the griffins. And they take a good chunk of griffin there. Those minotaurs are kind of tough, so they took a couple of my mummies out. Uh, we can um, we keep wailing on these guys over here. Ooh. Dark minotaurs are tough. Tough! I haste on my skeleton so they can get over to those minotaurs. I'm not worried about the two griffins. And it's 50 skeletons, but they're only first level skeletons, so they kill off three minotaurs, which are much tougher, generally speaking. And I can't remember if it's this game or Heroes of Might Magic 3, but the vampires can resurrect more vampires. Uh, as they're killing, which is pretty cool. But there we go. We lost a bunch of halflings and a few other things. Of course, they lost all their troops. Which will raise us skeletons, because we're necromancers, and that's what we do. So now we own this little town. Oh, we leveled up, so we can pick a skill. We'll just pick this one for now. If you click on the town, um, it's a very basic town. It doesn't have a whole lot there. But we can now recruit centaurs and gargoyles for ourselves. Uh, we can also build a castle here once we have enough resources, which will get us more gold. Uh, I believe the town by itself gives 500 gold. By building a castle, that increases to 1,000. I'm just happy to have more income. This gold is precious in this game. But that's kind of a quick overview of Heroes Might Magic 2. You know, it's just so much fun. There's so many things to explore. Pick up all these different resources, see what's up here. 
Uh, you'll encounter enemies along the way that you'll have to conquer and vanquish uh, to, to complete the map. And there's an above ground and below ground. Uh, there's a lot to explore there. Uh, and some maps. Uh, I think Heroes of Might and Magic 2 does have above and below ground on some of its maps. Not all of them, though. Uh, and you'll find out the tough way that some of these guys are really, really too tough for you. So make sure you save often. Well, you don't have to. I think the auto save pretty much saves every turn. Um, and if you read the book, it'll tell you what, like, what, what the statistics are, Pikemen, for example, and what the word lots means, what range of, you know, number of troops that is. So you have a better idea, um, if you want to know before you get into a fight whether or not it's too much for you. But that's just a, a quick example of Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Now I want to take it through a quick full game of Heroes of Might and Magic 3. So I'm going to take a little break and we'll be right back. Actually, it's going to be very fast for you. So hold on one time. And I have returned. Now we're ready to talk about Heroes of Might and Magic uh, 3 complete. Uh, just so much to this game. I'm going to move some windows over here, make some space. And uh, very, very excited, uh, which is one of my favorite, favorite games uh, of all time. And I love 2, uh, and I really love 3. I mean, they're really this close uh, for me. Uh, and I like to play 4, I like to play 5. Uh, I'll dabble in those from time to time, but I always come back to uh, these 2, because uh, they're just so much fun. Uh, but uh, three, 3 is just, uh, you know, uh, it misses 2 sense of humor. It gets a bit more serious as far as the way, uh, you know, everything looks and comes across. But uh, it's bigger, it's badder, it, it's got more races, more troop ties for each race. Uh, it's, just got, it's just got more of everything. And uh, bigger maps... <laughs> really is the pinnacle and then there's there's two expansions which even you know add to it just in case uh so uh let's see heroes of might and magic 3 is developed by new world software and was published uh, by the 3do company uh back on february 28th 1999 uh so a turn-based strategy single player multiplayer uh rpg tactical strategy whatever it's strategy i just, I just feel like it has some pretty good rpg elements um, you know, and by the way, when you play the campaign on these, uh, particularly with Heroes of Might and Magic 3, I remember this, when you play through the campaigns, you will level up heroes, and generally speaking, there's like maximum levels for those heroes, not that you're given too much opportunity to go above those limits, because the early boards, the early birds, the early boards don't have that much monsters and stuff to level up on, uh, but those heroes will carry over, the artifacts that you have can carry over, which is pretty cool. Um, from mission to mission. So, uh, very similar to the other game, though. You have different options you can pick from. Now, before I get started, if you're playing this from GOG, uh, it generally speaking, it takes up the full screen and it stretches it out, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, you can play with your NVIDIA or whatever settings to where uh, it doesn't stretch it out. But if you want to play it in a window, which is nowadays how I prefer to play it so that I can watch YouTube or whatever. Being that it's a turn-based game, it's it's fun to watch TV while you're doing that. So uh, you can press, it's a little different on this, but uh, you can press Control F4 to get it into a window mode. For a lot of these older games, uh, if you're playing from GOG and DOSBox, usually it's like Alt-Enter, Control-Enter, I believe. I think it's Alt-Enter to get it into a window Heroes of Might Magic 3 is a little different. It's it's Control F4, if I'm not mistaken. In order for it to work, though, your resolution has to be set at 16-bit. My computer, by default, is at 32-bit graphics. Uh, so I have to go in and Windows and turn that down to 16 in order to get this into a window. But then that lets me, you know, watch TV or pull up web pages or whatever in a separate window. Um, and it works out great. Uh, and, and also because of resolution and the changing times and stuff, I, I find that this is a good size, you know, for me and my eyes and, and still making it look very, very detailed as well. When stretched out, it looks a little bit too pixelated. So Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And as I click on it, we'll, we'll get the music kicking in here. Another good soundtrack. I really like listening to, the, to, to what these guys have done. And uh, I'll make sure that that has some uh, volume where you can hear me and hear it at the same time for now. So... Here comes the sound. But you got um, you got different types of games. You got the single scenarios like the other one. You got the campaign. It does have a built-in tutorial this time. You don't have to go through pages of instruction book. 
Um, but if you go into single scenario here, it's just insane. Just has to load it all up. But there's just... Look at this. Just, just so many scenarios to play through. It's just insane. The, the amount of content here, it's incredible. And each one of these are handcrafted and have different gimmicks and different things going on. Um, but if, if all of that wasn't enough, you've got written a map creator here, people. Yeah, you can pick all this stuff out. And if that's not enough, you can create your own map or you can download one from the internet. Uh, then if you, go into, uh, if you go into campaign, you have the original campaign, which is actually here in the middle for some reason. But you have uh, Sh Shadow of Death and Armageddon's Blade, which are the, the two other expansions. And Armageddon's Blade actually introduced an entire new side, the, the Conflux. There's a huge uh, history on how that side came to be, because it wasn't originally they were going to release a more Technomancer type of race, uh, which is actually in keeping with Might Magic lore in those games. If you play those RPGs, sooner or later you come on a spaceship, even though you're playing wizards and clerics and everything like that. Uh, it's kind of like Ultima in that way. But when they came up with this idea of a futuristic-y type of race in Heroes of Might Magic, people lost their wigs. So read about more of that on Wikipedia, but it's an interesting story. And the Shadow of Death, uh, if I recall correctly, because I really didn't play through that. At that point, I had content overload. Uh, too much of a good thing. But Shadow of Death... Uh, I believe offers new artifact, new artifact choices, of course, more maps and such. And then, oh my gosh, there's 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 custom for you need your custom maps. So it's just insane. And if that's not enough content for you, uh, they also have uh, on GOG.com. Uh, there's a separate uh, Heroes of My Magic Three campaigns, and I'll look it up real fast for you guys. Uh, let me just take a look here. I forget exactly what they're called, or maybe it's part of the part of the Heroes of My Magic uh, three here. No, it's a separate file. It's called Heroes Chronicles, and it's all chapters. So a cool little story. I'll show you a couple of stories while I have you all here, and I'm thinking about stories for a minute. Um. So, I forgot to tell my stories on Heroes of My Magic two. Hmm, kind of guess I track. All right, I'll start off at the beginning. Heroes of My Magic two. How I first fell in love with this game was I found the disc, I bought the disc from somewhere, found it in a store, and at the time I was working at Disney. Disney, uh, I worked at the front desk at Disney, but they were starting to worry about the Y2K problem. So they uh, they asked me to go to corporate office. Don't ask me why, I was just a front desk agent. And they asked me to go help at corporate for a year to help test, uh, to test homebrew programs for the Y2K bug. Uh, a lot of our hotels, uh, were reliant on systems that employees had made. Like at the uh, Fort Wilderness Resort and Campgrounds, for example, there was an Excel spreadsheet, no, a Lotus 123 spreadsheet that someone had created just to handle the reserving of the bikes, handing things out. It was a huge mass of spreadsheet with tons of macros, very creative. But because it was Lotus 123, uh, there was some vulnerability to the Y2K problem that when you typed in, uh, you know, 11-00, slash I thought it was 1900, for example, instead of 2000, which could create issues. Uh, so I would have to go and find and interview people, find out what they were using, get a copy of the program, bring it back, and everything else. Well, uh, there was days, entire weeks sometimes, where I really didn't have a whole lot on my plate to do. So, or I'd be waiting for a manager to get free to talk to me. So I, I borrowed my wife's Japanese laptop because we couldn't afford a separate laptop back then, but she had carried one from Japan. And I was able to install Heroes of Might Magic 2. And even though her laptop wasn't Japanese, I couldn't understand like the Windows characters or anything like that. I could figure out, or the text in Windows, I could figure out enough to get the program running. And it worked just fine. Uh, PC laptops, region free, yay! So I was able to install it, and I played so much Heroes of Might and Magic 2 uh, there at Disney on the clock uh, for whatever reasons. Uh, just had a ton, a ton of fun with that back in the day. So that's my Heroes of Might and Magic 2 stories. The, the campaigns are really good. Again, go and check them out. There's an evil campaign and a good campaign, and, and the maps are just, just well designed. So Heroes of Might and Magic 3 for that story. Um... I'll, I'll talk about Chronicles here, and I'm just going to move that over into the, the window for a minute. And let you see this. It's on, it's on uh, GOG right here, 
and I'll just change it over to uh, Chrome here. Here you go. And so you can kind of see, um, I'll hide my face for a second, but it's this, it's called Heroes Chronicles um, All Chapters. So after they had released um, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and the expansions, uh, they had this bright idea that, boy, there was so much content there. It was so intimidating that uh, that they, they, they wanted to get people involved with this franchise that in a way that maybe it wasn't so intimidating, wasn't so much. So they came up with the idea of doing these sh uh, campaigns that were just standalone games. So you weren't buying the entire Heroes 3 with all the expansions for a kajillion dollars. You would just buy these things for like $10 each or $15. And each one would have two story-based uh, shortage campaigns. You couldn't pick your races or anything like that. It was just very straightforward, very linear um, ordeals. And it ended up coming out, I believe, in sets of two, uh, and there was eight chapters all together, so uh, four, four different releases, four different boxes. Uh, at the time, I couldn't afford a whole lot, and I already felt like there was a ton of content, and I was bothered by the fact that these were kind of self-contained and very short, um, not very short, but very focused. You couldn't pick what races you want. They were basically like the campaign, but even more restricted. So... I didn't want to spend $15 times four, whatever it was ended up costing at the time, so I passed. Later on, wanting to complete my collection as a collector, I would look on eBay, and holy cow, because of the limited print run, these things really skyrocketed in price. Those discs were $60 a pop, and remember, there's four of these, so uh, it cost you hundreds of dollars to complete your Heroes collection, and, and it really wasn't that much content. Um, and I was just like, holy heck, that, that there, there's no way. Um, oh, I just noticed that you guys are only getting part of that screen here. Let me resize that and move that up for you. But it was just like, holy cow, no, that, that's insane. So um, I, I passed. Well, imagine my delight when GOG struck a deal with Ubisoft and started putting the old games on there. Uh, and uh, Heroes of Might Magic 2 and 3, I was super, super happy just to have a copy of the game I could play without the, uh, the encumbrance of a disc. But then one day they released these Chronicles, and uh, it was like, holy cow, they just totally, uh, I mean, I'm sure people are happy who have the physical disc. Uh, I, I, when I collect, I'm just happy if I just have uh, the game at all. I don't care what format it comes in. But yeah, you, you just gave me something for $10 that I would have had to pay hundreds to, to complete. I was just so excited. Immediately got it, and now it's on my computer. Um, I played a little bit of it. haven't put a lot of time into it, unfortunately. Just been too busy with other stuff. But one day, I'll retire and sit down and play through this campaign. Uh, but as you can see, lots of, lots of good uh, you know, four and a half stars from 579 votes. So super, super cool. But that's called Heroes Chronicles All Chapters. A good way to jump in and get started and for ten dollars you're getting 200 dollars worth of content <laughs> at least that's what people think on ebay the collectors think on ebay you can get heroes of might and magic 3 complete for ten dollars heroes of might and magic 2 for ten dollars uh which by the way has a full five stars on that one that that both might magic 2 and 3 a full five stars not something you see too often and it's just good reason why you guys need to go and play this game so go ahead and close that and we will switch you back to um our program already in progress let me just switch that back over there we go and we'll make that a little bit bigger so we can get back to the fun and there we are so we're going to do a single uh, scenario here and we'll turn up the music just a little bit there show our available scenarios and, and you can sort these by number of players the size uh, what expansion that's the original there at the top We'll do, um, we'll do this one. And I'm looking for one where, here we go. Key to victory is the one I want to do. So once you pick one, if you hit begin, you'll jump right into it. But I always, after I pick the map I want, and you can pick your difficulty as, as well. Uh, I haven't fired around with these two too much. I'm just going to keep this one on, on easy for now because I don't want to face too much difficulty in showing this to you guys. But if you show advanced options, you can actually pick your starting type. And we'll start off the beginning here, but you've got Castle, which has your crossbowmen, your soldiers, your cavaliers, and ultimately the angel 
the rampart, which has the creatures of the swamp. Tower, which is really cool because you got your wizard and your uh, dragons there. Uh, they're wizardry like high end genies, I believe, are in there. Infernos, which has your teleporting devils, hellhounds, succubi, uh, necropolis, which has your undead. I love undead. Uh, dungeons, your underground creatures of the night, like the harpies and the lizards. Uh, they also have a dragon as their ultimate one, the, the underground dragon. Stronghold, which is your barbarians. Uh, not a lot of magic there. Just uh, still very much like Hero of Might Magic 2, where it's a good early race, uh, but not very useful in the, in the super long run. Uh, with that being said, they can still be pretty brutal, and they have longer legs than they did in Heroes of Might Magic 2 by far. So uh, definitely improved on that one. Um, Fortress, and, uh, that, uh, Fortress has like dwarves and things like that. I'm drawing a blank on that one. I don't play Fortress a whole lot. And then Conflux, which came with the Armageddon's Blade expansion. The last minute switch they did to appease uh, the fanboys who were grinding against the mechanical race. Uh, this is full of elementals. And what's interesting about this race is I think they only got like one low level-ish, weakish unit. But then they have like four or five units that are right smack dab in the middle. And then their high end unit, the Phoenix. Whereas most races, all races have seven creatures. But you feel like you got like two beginners and two high ends and three middle ones. With the Conflux, you got like four or five middle ones. So, uh, elementals of different types. But we're going to go ahead and do Castle. And then you can pick your starting hero. And uh, if you right click on it, you can see what this hero specialty is. I'm going to go for him, Archery. It's a good one for this board. Uh, and then you can pick your starting bonus. I usually like resources. So go ahead and begin. There's a little bit of story here uh, in the random maps. There, or not random maps, but in these uh, scenarios, the, the creators will put in some stories uh, in the such. And of course, in the campaign, there's a lot of stories. There's a lot of reading. Build your forces, and when you're ready, command the border guards to stand down uh, and the such. So we start here in the castle in the corner. We'll go ahead and zoom in on the castle, and you guys are going to watch this town grow from its humble beginnings to something that's big and powerful. Now, the look on this one is much more cohesive uh, than the Heroes of Might Magic 2. They're, they're going less for, for humor and going more for kind of a high fantasy look here. Generally speaking, uh, unless I have reason to do otherwise, I, uh, you know, I like to go for, if you click on the, the village hall, you see all your different upgrades here. These down here affect your creatures for the most part. So as you go with upgraded guardhouse, for example, uh, you'll get guardsmen instead of pikemen. Um, upgraded archer towers will give you crossbowmen instead of regular bowmen, which shoot twice, which is totally worth it, um, and the such. So, but if you, right up here are more of your uh, quality of living and your economic upgrades. So if you right click on town hall, it says right here, if you upgrade the town hall, your kingdom can build a, or earn a thousand gold per day, which I'm an economic person by trade, so I like to dive right into that whenever possible and get that gold flowing, because things get to cost a lot of money later on. So uh, originally, uh, the town bill is 500 gold per day. This upgrade brings it to a thousand. It costs 2,500, so it takes five days to pay for itself. But then after that, it's just extra income. So we'll go ahead and get that going. You see that builds up a little bit. Just like the other game, I like to start off also hiring a hero. A cleric belongs to this type of town, by the way. Druid is from that other town we were talking about, the forest town, whatever it was called, the fortress. So I want to build one of those. Um, it won't let me do it while there's a hero there in the visiting slot. So we need to move him up. You can actually now garrison the hero, which if someone attacks my town while he's here, he'll be behind the protective walls, which is pretty cool. We'll get a cleric here. And we'll see, he starts off with some pikemen and some flying griffins. And we'll let him keep his griffins for now. There's only two of them. And we're now ready to start exploring with Orin, uh, the hero here. A lot of resources right here at the beginning. Um, so we can start gathering with him, but as you gather, if you notice there, right here is how much movement he has left. So as you gather stuff, it takes a little bit of movement. I usually like to let the scout do that, so he's going to be my scout. Let him go ahead and start collecting those initial resources that are lying around our building here. Now, as you come to these treasure chests, those are the treasure chests, just like the Heroes of Might Magic 2, that give you gold or experience. Um, 
they can be a good source of early experience to early level up your hero or to get that um, economy going straight away. As you can tell, I like to go for the early economy myself. There's lots of things there for, for him to, to grab, for the scout to grab there. But there is um, some peasants there. Now, peasants guarding this is pretty weak. Um, so that's a good place to send um, Orion here for his first fight. His peasants are super weak. Of course, I haven't picked up stuff because that's bad habit. Should let the uh, collector scout dude get that. Take the gold. And we'll go ahead and attack these peasants right off. Baha, because we can. Now, the peasants are awed by the power of the force at the beginning of the scare. Do you wish to pursue and engage them? Um, a lot of times I will pursue them for the experience points if I don't think I'll take any losses. So I'll do that real fast here. When it's an easy fight, one of the, things, one of the nice things is combat can go pretty fast in this game. And you can do um, automatic combat like this. Only do that on super easy fights, though, because otherwise you'll take unnecessary losses. And I get 21 experience, not a whole lot. Peasants are really, really easy. And now we can have him go and collect, or we can have the scout get the, go ahead and flag that resource. He's almost out of moving points anyways. Go ahead and end our turn and get the next turn done. I'm going to kind of fly through this so the game doesn't take too, too long. So hopefully I don't go too fast for anybody. I want to go for the next economic upgrade, but as you can see in the small print, it says I need a mage guild level 1, a marketplace, and a blacksmith. So because I like getting money faster, because that'll bump me up to 2,000 gold, I'm going to go ahead and start working on that. I should have probably done that mage guild earlier, because now I really need to send Orion back, though, because once you have a mage guild, you can buy a spell book. And even basic spells that you guys have seen uh, can help you out a little bit. Or Orion's not really a caster type, um, I'll have him flag this ore mine first to start getting that ore flowing. You gain control of an ore pit. It'll provide you with two units of ore per day. But we'll send him back to, to go ahead and get a spell book. It's 500 gold well spent. And summon boat. Mm, bless. Uh, which allows the unit to do maximum damage, dispel, cure, and lightning bolt. I really prefer spells, spells like haste and slow, but I'll take what I can get. Go ahead and pick up the ring. Increases the health of all your units by one. That's very useful for weaker units. And now we've got that wood thing. And we'll end our turn. So if you take a look right now, Orion's pikemen have 10 health. So if this guy here gives them the ring, and one of the things you'll notice about this and this one now in the trade screen is that the heroes have slots. You have ring slots here. You have a helmet slot uh, for all the different artifacts you find. And we'll go ahead and put that on there. And you'll see now that the health of the... It says 10, but in parentheses it says 11. So now he has a little bit more health to work with. It makes him a little bit tougher. Also notice they have catapults, which are very useful when laying like, siege to things. So that was cute. So we'll press forward with our guy here. And you just want to you want to touch these little buildings here. A Garden Revelation gives your character plus one knowledge, which is more spell points. Very useful for this guy, too, because he's not really a, a spellcaster type. He's a might character. So now you can see his spell points are maximum of 20 now instead of 10, because his knowledge has gone up to two uh, and the such. We have Beholders guarding this right here. And Beholders are, are ranged creatures um, and are probably a little bit too much for us at this early stage in the game. I'm going to continue to build up my uh, my town here because I really want that economic upgrade, the big castle. I don't know if there's anything else my scout can do. We'll just uh, continue to sit tight for a minute with the scout. It doesn't have to do something every time. Windmill gives some random resources. Those will come in handy later. So there's a, mono, a novelisk right here. And if you look at the obelisk, you come across an obelisk made from a type of stone you've never seen before, staring at it intently. The smooth surface suddenly changes to an inscription. The inscription is a piece of lost uh, ancient map. Quickly, you copy down the piece and the inscription vanishes as the replies that appeared. So these obelisks give you little pieces. Uh, somewhere on this map is a buried uh, artifact that if you take it back to your town, 
will make you a ton more gold per turn and I think double your creature population every week. So double what you would double the growth rate, I should say, which is super awesome on paper. Uh, not really going to be needed here, so I'm not going to focus on those anymore. But in bigger maps, just realize that that's a thing, and it's really cool to go and find the hidden treasure uh, and the such. And get that blacksmith in. So we'll keep that, keep that going. And we'll end another turn. And you see our resources, our gold anyways, uh, and our stone going up every turn. We do have a pack of stone golems here, which are slow but tough walkers. We don't have enough to take them down yet. Go ahead and get this. That gives you plus one defense. So exploring pays off. And some of the stuff you can do with different characters. Like if I go over here to the scout, remember that garden revelation gave plus one knowledge? As I mouse over it in the, the, the bottom there, you'll see garden of revel, oops, sorry. Guard of Revelation plus one knowledge once per hero not visited, which means that hero has yet to visit it. So my scout can go there and pick up, you know, an extra uh, knowledge point. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it, when I'm playing campaigns, I do like to, uh, the bigger campaigns, I do like to grow two or three different heroes. So I make sure I hit those even with my secondary heroes. There's some dragonflies there. And the game shows you very clearly if you're going in a direction that's going to start a fight. Because it'll turn to a sword. So there are one of those... Uh, oh, there's a learning stone, not an obelisk. So we'll go there in a second. It's the end of another turn. We pick something else to build up. And now that we've met the prerequisites, we can build the city hall, which gives us 2,000 gold per day. Yay, more money. Woohoo! Can never have enough money. Okay, so if he goes there, he gets a buttload of experience, and he levels up. He can be in a, a regular scholar, which allows him to learn spells from other characters, or he can do advanced leadership. This is a might hero. I like to focus on might skills with uh, Orin, so I keep calling him Orion. It's Orin. So uh, morale, which will let him get more attacks in battle, is always awesome. We've got some of those uh, pack of wolf riders right there. We don't want to attack those just yet with our puny little army. Um, so we're kind of running out things to explore if we don't start killing some things. Um, the capital can earn us 4,000 gold a day, but we have to get a castle. And the castle is an upgraded version of the Citadel. Um, so I have a couple of choices here, especially as we're ending, getting towards the end of the week. I start thinking about, okay, I want to build some creature things so that when I hit the, the next week, I have creatures to pick from. A Citadel will uh, increase all the creature growth by 50%, as well as uh, add some um, uh, Terran obstacles and defenses to the town. Whereas a Barracks will allow me to recruit Swordsmen, which are tough, tough, tough walking dudes. So we're going to start off with that for now. And we'll just kind of play it by ear here. All right. We're going to start sending Orin back here because he's going to need some more troops to start making some headway here. Now, you know, you're kind of always playing this game on your head. You want, you, on one hand, you could wait weeks, even months to really build up a big army. But kind of keep in mind, the enemy could be doing that too. The enemies are oftentimes have their own towns and doing their own recruiting. Um, so it seems like, especially on harder difficulty levels, the longer you wait, the more massive that enemy army can really become. So you don't want to wait too, too long. Um, and now we got a tough decision to make here. We can either increase by 50% the three buildings we have, or we can add a griffin tower to get some griffins going early on, or even a monastery to get monks, which are pretty cool, and get that growth rate started. I'm going to go ahead and go for the 50%. Okay. And now when we finish, ba-doom. Yay, all dwellings have increased population. So, um, you know, I could I, I could recruit some archers, but I think what I want to do first is upgrade those archers to crossbowmen. So we're going to upgrade the archer tower here, because that means they'll be able to shoot twice, which makes them twice as effective. Now, Orin has, Orin has regular, some regular uh, crossbowmen, I believe. I mean, regular bowmen, whatever the hell they're called. Archers. They're not crossbowmen. If, you, if you've upgraded a building to get the upgraded creature, you can, in fact, um, 
upgrade what you already have. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to take the archers of the Orin. I'm going to go back here. And if I double click on them, I can now have an upgrade button. So for some gold, they now become marksmen, which shoot twice. Uh, that's the nice thing about Heroes of Might Magic 3. Shows you what their special power is in the text. Woohoo! Okay. We're also going to get Orin some more things to play with. Okay. Now we can give that to our hero dude, Orin. Oh, we've run out movement space. Okay. Uh, let's start working on that capital. I need a castle. Okay, let's get... Let's give that to Orin, give some more pikemen to Orin, give some more crossbowmen to Orin. And now Orin's got some more toys to play with, so to speak. He might be able to take all those beholders. Remember, boys and girls, always a good idea to save just in case I'm wrong. Call it whatever you want. Call it W, just because. And let's see if we can take on those beholders now. Boy, yeah, beholders, man. Ranged creatures, that's pretty tough. Okay, maybe we won't take on the beholders. Let's take on something easier. Let's see here. Let's take on these walkers over here, the pack of stone golems. Okay, we'll end our turn. Uh, let's see here. Can't do the capital yet because I need 10,000 gold. And a little gold symbol there is telling me I don't have enough gold. I can do this resource silo, which gives me wood and ore each day. That's an economic upgrade. We'll get that going. Okay. Oh, they want to run away. We're going to attack them because we want experience points. 15 golems should be worth some experience points. Now, one of the things that's different about this game, I believe from Heroes of My Magic 2, if your archers shoot too far, you'll see the arrow's broken, which means they only do half damage. You can W to wait, make the golems go first, because they have a slower speed. Um, so that's, uh, that's an advantage there. Uh, if you hit spacebar, your your characters will guard. So we're going to keep them close to the archer. Let the golems come to us. While the archers do their thing. Mm -hmm. See, there's that shooting twice in action. And... We still got broken arrows. Oh, that one's a full arrow. He's in range. Have a nice day. Rise is waiting for you in the back. We'll pass some turns here. Now the Crusader can get to these golems. And I think I need to turn on statistics. I like my statistics turning on. Got some cool music there in the background. You got different options here you can play with. Now, it says here, now that I've turned those options on, that if I attack the golems, I'll do 70 to 100 points of damage. Golem has 30, so I, I kill two, maybe three. Not too shabby. Because there's only five of them. Easy peasy. So, good thing we didn't skip that. That was 400 experience we didn't have before, and it only took a moment. And now we have this gym pool. We do have some magogs there, which are tough distance attackers again. I respect distance attackers, especially when I don't have good flyers. Um, so, gonna need to work on that. Uh, we're out of money. We already built this turn anyways. We build that Griffin Tower so we can get some flyers going. Now, I probably don't want to mess with these ranged dudes just yet. Um, the Wolf Riders I could probably handle. We're gonna save just in case I'm wrong. Oops, that would not be the save button. Save game, save.
keep this thing running. Ooh, get up there and get those wolf riders. Uh, we'll go ahead and let them go so we can keep going. Yay, sulfur! Okay. And we're building up our castle. As you can see, the castle's getting bigger and bigger. The, um, the upgrade here is kind of nice because that means our griffins will be able to go further. Um... And all that's money that's taken away from us eventually getting that capital upgrade as well. Hmm. I don't like missing too many turns of building, though. And... Hmm. <laughs> we'll build a monastery. There is one place we haven't really searched yet, and that's down here where these... We have to get past these flyers, though. Hmm. Let's do it. Hopefully... Oh, do you want to pursue them? Uh, no. Okay, they went away. Let's see if there's anything we can upgrade while we're waiting. We do eventually need the stables to be done, so we'll get that knocked out. We're never going to get that money upgrade, are we? Okay. So, this is an entrance to the subterranean lands. It's just another map, down below, so to speak. Uh, you don't really care about the obelisk. I'm going to have my gold build up for a bit. I'm not going to buy any upgrades. What we're hoping is we're hoping to find some more gold here. So there's a treasure chest right there we can get some gold from. That's going to help. We need to get that 10,000 so we can buy that castle upgrade. You also notice there's a flail there. There's some gold behind that storm elemental. Ooh, right-handed weapon increases your attack skill by four. That's going to help a lot to do more damage. Yeah, we want to save before we attack the air elementals. I, I forget how much storm elementals are upgraded, so they can be pretty tough. I'm not sure we're ready for those yet, but we're going to find out. Oh, do you want to pursue them? Hmm, experience is nice, but we'll say no for now. All right, get some money in. Should be able to afford that upgrade uh, next turn. Lots of mummies. We're gonna sneak around the mummy and grab that gold. Mm, mummies, I think, are distance attackers. Not really sure. Oh, they look kind of cool. The mummies from the last game look funny. These just kind of look cool. Uh, they are walkers, I believe. They can curse your, your troops. Because they don't have any shots. See, range weapons guys usually have uh, a line that says shots. So, uh, we'll, we'll wait for them to come in closer. The mummies come in. See how many hit points they have? 30. So very similar to my swordsman here. But my extra attack skill is really going to help out. You can see I have like a lot more attack skill than him. So, my damage is 6 to 9, the mummies is 3 to 5, so he has less damage a little bit, but it's really going to show a lot because my swordsman has my hero's attack power backing him up. But we can also help him out by blessing or cursing, we can do that next round. The archer's doing their thing pretty well. Really knocking out a bunch of those guys. Oh, killed off two of my pikemen. So, again, normally his damage is 6 to 9, so let's say the low number is 6. There's 10 of them, so that would be 60 damage. But when I mouse over the mummies, you'll see that the low end of the damage is 87. And the reason for that variance in the math is because my attack skill is much higher than their defense skill. So... For every point of difference, I want to say you do about 5% more damage. So it definitely adds up. Have a nice day. That's why you always have to be careful when fighting uh, enemy troops that have a commander. Because it makes those troops a lot more powerful than normal. Especially if it's a might uh, commander you're fighting against. Magic commander will just cast all kinds of magic on your troops. Uh, so I can pick basic armor, or expert leadership, or armor. 
Get some armor there. Increases magic resistance. Awesome. So we're definitely getting more and more powerful here. At the same time, we're now ready to finally get that capital to make more money. Yay, money! So that helps a lot. We'll just keep collecting some of these minerals. Oh, now see, that's a gold mine. Gold mines bring you gold income every turn. Totally worth it. Medusa Queens can be a pain in the butt. So we're going to save just in case uh, we're in over our heads. But I'm thinking we can do this. Oh, they wish to join us. There's a, there's a skill called Diplomacy, which makes this pop up a lot more often. And uh, it can really make some of these boards really easy. You pay for the, the people sometimes, but totally worth it. And I got these angel bow feathers, whatever, that increases my archery skill by 15%. So that's awesome. More money, more archery skill. Life is good. Life is good indeed. So now we can start doing more upgrades for uh, uh, more troops here. So go ahead and get our training ground going, which gives us the champions, which is now the sixth tier unit. 100 health, 15 to 25 damage. Jousting bonus on top of that. We're doing pretty good. Um... Now I can explore some more subterranea, or I can start heading back to the castle um, to explore more of the upper land, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to do that. Let's see here. I'm going to have him start walking. I thought there was keyboard shortcuts. Probably forgetting those. That just lets you quickly cycle through the heroes to have them walk, which you already have them walking our plan to walk so the you know each one of these has different options i mean uh, upgrades and each one of these are pretty good the monastery for example when you upgrade uh from monks to zealots zealots do the same damage in melee that they do at range unlike monks so that upgrades worth it uh the champions uh have better stats and better speed we really want the portal of glory so we can get angels Let's see here. It requires a crap ton of gold, though. Let's go ahead and keep doing this other stuff. Get him over here. Keep upgrading. Upgrade, upgrade. I like the upgraded barracks because that means that those guys, the champions, attack twice a turn. It's their special ability when they get upgraded, so... Totally worth it there. <laughs> One more upgrade. Upgrades for everybody. So you can upgrade the Mage Guild and get more and more spells so you can train to your heroes. We're not really, you know, we're mostly focused on a Might hero, so it's not really a priority for me. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, that's a lot of gold is the big hold up there so we do have some good gold income though so that gold is shooting up pretty well we'll go ahead and move him out of the way we can actually put him in the garrison Oop. that lets or or in whatever his name is become a visitor Actually, give him the uh, Medusa chicks that we did. Yeah, we need 20,000 gold to get that. And I want to be able to beat stuff up in the meantime, so. Now, one of the nicer things about this one is you can click on the castle and see all your troops that you can hire from right from there. And you can, you can hire them directly from here. Rather than have to go to each single building like in Heroes of Might Magic 2. As you can tell, we're actually hitting a gold a gold wall there. This is what we'll do for now. Oh, gotta upgrade these guys. Ah, oh, not enough gold! Let me just see my turn to get some more gold real quick. Money! Alright, upgrade these guys. Okay, so now I have lots of champion, lots of marksmen, life is good. I'll also go ahead and upgrade the little hike man while I'm here. Upgrade! Yay! They do a little bit more damage. 
Okay. Now I have no problem getting past that beholder, which is right in front of that observation tower. Yeah, and it would make me fight. The only problem with fighting, one of the problems with fighting these range dudes or really fast flyers is that they will whittle down your numbers. And you kind of want to walk away from your fights with as much of your troops intact because you'll need them for future fights. might go up to the champion since he's in closer range. Nope. They're gonna go after the archers. They didn't do much damage, though. Ah, oh, yeah. Monks with an extra turn. I like how the monks just fire that ball of monk happiness. Only well, we lost one archer. That's not so bad. And by clicking on that now, we get a lot more map revealed. Uh, we got some scholars here. You can kind of scan around the mini-map and see there's a lot more places to, to find and discover. Oh, and we got some Mercury up there, which we'll probably need, so we should head over in that direction. Which means our, our scout might finally have some work to do. So we'll get him out to scout. Oh, forget about that guy. <laughs> saw the enemy hero kind of running up there, but uh, as the scenario suggested, there's this little border guard right here that until one of us makes it go away, that's kind of standing as an impasse between us and his side. So we'll be using that soon enough. Yay, more knowledge. This mercenary can't give you attack skill. Oh, the Griffins want to join us. The Griffins is a castle troop. So that's really good. A lot of times you'll get troops, as you've seen, we've already gotten uh, some Medusa, whatever they were earlier. And I just kind of stuck up in the garrison back in town. Because I generally don't want to mix up my troops. It hits your morale. And I want to, you know, there's seven different troop types from the castle that we eventually will hire. And there's seven slots in our army. So... We don't want to muddy the waters anyways with other stuff. There's a prison right here. And let's click on that. In a dazzling display of daring, you break into the local jail and free a hero in prison there who, in turn, pledges loyalty to your cause. And look, now we have Adele. And Adele, oh my gosh, has... Looks like angels, which are the highest level unit there are. Uh, so those are flyers. And if you upgrade them to archangels, they can resurrect the dead, which is really awesome. So she is a level seven magic user, uh, cleric. Uh, we could actually move all our troops to her and she can become our new lead character if we want to go a magic route now. Um, she also has advanced diplomacy, which uh, allows you to negotiate with monsters who are weaker than you and get them onto your side easier. That was that skill I told you about earlier. In a way, I kind of feel like this is almost an overpowered skill. It's one of my favorite ones in the game. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna dance with the one who, who brought me, so to speak. So I'm gonna stick with this dude. Uh, Oren. And I'm just gonna make her give him his her her angels, because those are really powerful. Uh, they're the highest level unit in the game outside of the upgraded version uh, Archangels, at least for the, the castle. Highest level for castle. The black dragons and such are statistically more powerful. Um, and what have you. So, we, the Sarebi, now everything's gonna want to flee from us, because we have those angels on our team. But of course, now I'm just going to want to kick their ass even more just for the experience points, if nothing else. Because, as you're going to see here, these angels are going to run forward. Shoop! And there he goes. Yeah, attack the angels. Eh, it's not going to hurt them too much. Let's hit the monks don't kill you first. Which they will. So, 300 quick experience points. <coughs> Excuse me. And she gave me an artifact. Yes, this may just be what we're looking for. May I please have the angel feather arrows? Oh, I kind of clicked through that a little fast. So that was a seer's hut, and she was looking for the angel feather arrows. Um, this is interesting. The angel feather arrows give me a plus fifteen, uh, give me a plus fifteen percent archery damage, which affects the monks and the archers. 
or I can trade them in for 5,000 experience points. I think I'm keeping them. So that, that's pretty hilarious. I'm not giving up all those arrows. Keep your experience points. I don't care. So, uh, really, the only thing we're waiting on, really, is this. And for that, we need money. So we can skip the town building thing. Um, don't really see a ton for my scouts to accept to grab this Keymaster Tim, which will allow you to get past the Border Guard. That's a blue tent, though. Dark blue Keymaster's tent. And that was a red Border Guard. So I don't think that will get me past that one there. I might have to go back underground. Spell remove obstacles. Alright. And a ring of conjuring increases all of your magic by two rounds. Well, that was exciting. I got angels. Life is good. But I can't get past that key master tent up there, so I'm gonna to have to go back underground, I think. Oh wait, we wanted to get that Mercury thing right there too. We'll just get through these turns pretty quick here. We'll let them run away. We'll flag that. Kill these guys in the way. They run away, and let's get back underground. Most of the boards are bigger, more involved in this. I purposely picked this one because I knew it was shorter, straightforward, for the purposes of this video. Oh, look it. Now we have enough money to build our little angel haven. Ah. So now we can recruit angels from there as well. Uh, to do the upgraded portal, we'll need uh, more mercury and a lot more gold. And I'm halfway tempted to do that just because big ass angels are really cool. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna end a couple of turns real fast and get some good angels. I'll go ahead and just skip a couple more turns. Oh, we'll need money. Money, money, money. Okay, so now with all that money, the, the problem, <laughs> we can now maybe upgrade. No, we can't even upgrade those guys yet because it costs so much to upgrade them. Let's see if they'll let us upgrade now. Holy crap. That is not a cheap date. Can't upgrade these guys. Okay. Can we upgrade them now? Alright, finally. Jeez. Oh, it's the gems. The gems were kind of the hold of there. Now we have Archangels that resurrects allies and such. Super awesome. So now you see the fully upgraded town for the most part. I didn't upgrade the Mage Guild all the way, but this is pretty much... Oh, hey, we can do that too. This is pretty much a pretty upgraded uh, town here. Uh, I need more money for more of these guys. All right, one more. One more. Get us some champions here so we have a good number of champions. There we go. All right. So now we have a nice, good uh, castle army. Now we can just pretty much take on anything that gets in our way. At least we hope that the enemy hasn't upgraded as quickly as we have. And we'll send a, a runner to town that will be able to hire and bring more troops to the front lines. Run him into there. So there is this horse button right here. I, I know there's a keyboard shortcut for that, but that guy will get you to wherever you're going to. Oh, there's the red key master. So that will now let me pass. I should have just taken a few more steps. That will let us pass up there. So we're going to go do that. At the same time, our new scout Adele can actually bring us some 
some more troops. Because we have money. And we have lots of lots of troops. We can hire. You see, you rarely have enough money to get everything. So you do have to plan accordingly. You have to make some choices. I like that about this game. I like that it forces you to make choices. So now Adele can meet him halfway in the middle, saves us a turn, and she can give him more troops. Bada bing, bada boom. And then she can go back to town. So let's go into enemy territory. And there's a guy right up there, and he looks like he has an impressive army, including some stone, some some undead dragons. That's gonna hurt. That's okay. We can do this. We have faith in our angels. And he's just staying in there. He's waiting for us. He's got one bone dragon. It's not gonna help against six angels. So when you're defending a, a, a city that's upgraded, you have this wall, which your walkers really can't get past, and it reduces damage from range attacks by half. Um, I don't think that compounds with a distance penalty, but I could be wrong. The angel, of course, can fly over there, but then he's over there all by himself. Uh, yeah, that's always happy. Yeah, he could be, well, the, 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 the griffins can fly over there too, uh, and the such. We'll put W for weight, but the, the the town also has a moat. Now this is Undead Town, so instead of a typical water moat, it has a bunch of undead skulls. But trust me, they do the they do damage if you walk across them, or they'll slow you down, or some sort of effect. Um, plus, you have turrets that will also attack you. Now your hero has a catapult that will slowly damage the walls. You can actually uh, get artifacts or get skills that upgrade your siege damage, so that you can get through those enemy walls even faster. Which is very useful on big maps where you're doing a lot of sieging. Eh, I like it when the enemy can't wait to come out. Man, they just they just keep picking on those poor marksmen. Poor marksmen. You can watch those liches too, because it's that poison cloud attacks it hurts everything even close to the center. Those archers don't do a lot of damage at all, so I'm thinking it does cut it in a quarter. That's a pike, man. Ooh, extra move. We'll probably take away some of those guys. Ouch. Fight, fight! I do have spells. Or a maximum angel. What does the angels do? No, they just do a flat damage anyways. Probably should have used it on those griffins. Oh well. It's kind of pathetic. Yeah, see that good luck's really paying off. Extra attacks for everybody. Yeah, the vampire does, I think, still go bleh. stack of uh, undead uh, walkers he's got there. Zombies. Those are kind of tough. Not tough enough to stand up to angels, but you know. Yeah. Alright, we'll take your orb. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Leveling up twice. Woohoo! Wow, three times. Now, the game isn't ended yet, so I haven't either killed all of his talents or all of his heroes yet. Uh, 
But this is the undead. This is a great opportunity to look at the undead landscape here. So compared to the last one, this one's definitely more serious, more gloomy, uh, and the such. I will say one thing about Heroes of Might and Magic 5. Their towns are, you know, because it's 3D and the camera spinning around it, are very impressive looking. Uh, I will say, aesthetically speaking. He had a lot of troops in here that he didn't recruit out uh, because he didn't have enough gold. So it's up to me if I want to, uh, you know, keep a garrison in here. Uh, I can hire some of those troops and keep them behind to provide some resistance. Or I can keep my one massive stack growing by bringing more castle troops to it. So we have strategic choices. Ooh. Oh, see, here comes the, here comes the uh, blue army leader. So the computer kind of looks like the computer might have had some of its, you know, troops in the castle and some over here. So it's a little split, which is not going to work in its favor. Actually, I think I, I might just sit in their castle here. I could go out and attack them and meet them on the field of battle, mano a mano. But if I sit here, then and he attacks me, I've got the fortress helping to defend my troops, which is an advantage to me. Uh, that's pretty funny. Hmm, choices, choices. Uh, if, if, if he doesn't claim a town within a week, uh, he loses. So, so that's, you know, that happens. If you run out of towns, uh, you have one week to reclaim one or the game's over. By the way, if your hero loses or retreats, um, sometimes you can, re you can rehire them from taverns, depending on what runaway option you used or whatever happened. To be honest, I've always reloaded. Generally speaking, so yeah. Also, save different weeks just in case you need to go back a few steps. Anyways, let's see if he attacks our town. Yeah, there he goes. Because he needs to be in a town or he loses. Ooh, that's 18 vampires. It's not a bad stack there. Anti -va 18 vampires, ancient vampires are tough. And they drain life. Uh, and I think that means they can restore their stack. They may even be able to grow new vampires out of that. I, I'd rather not find out the hard way. If I send my angel down there, he's kind of, you know, a subject to a lot of attack there. So I almost want to let his guy come to me. There's a skill called Tactics, which, by, which is awesome to have because it lets you arrange your troops at the very beginning of battle, which can be very strategic. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I got new spells because there must have been a mage's guild here that had spells. Let's slow those vampires down so they can't just go wherever they want. I'll have my guys wait for a bit and see what happens. Oh, he slowed down my angel. Smart. You know, I don't know if that moat will do any damage to undead or not. That's a that's a good thought. Do, 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 do. Oh, we can kill off some vampires. Keep that flyer stack from doing too much damage right off. Another strategy is to surround your your ranged guys with some walkers so that they can't be easily accessed, which is probably what I should be doing right here. Like that. Not worried about the zealots because they do the same damage in melee as they do in the distance anyways. So now the angels can go. And what I can do is I can have them fly out and then fly back in if I want to. Because they were the last ones. I had them wait. So if you're the first, the angels had the fastest speed I think. Even with the spell they cast on me. His speed is 13. His speed is 8. His speed is 8. So, when you have the highest speed, uh, you go first, but if you wait, then you wait until, you're, you know, you're last, but then the next round is going to go first again, so you can get two turns in a row, and then I just got high morale too, so now we're just going to have all kinds of fun, but my Archangel should go first. See how the towers are wearing his Lich down? It's awesome. And I can fly back for protection. There's not really enough out here anymore to really scare my Archangels. Oh, I was going to show you all the uh, resurrect ability, so hopefully things will live another turn. Oh, 
Yeah, I see, the vampires uh, did some damage in one race from the dead. Huh. Those ancient vampires, man. Uh, let's see here. Whose turn is it? Oh, it's the Zealots. Oh, all those guys in the corner got hit by the liches. Oh, that was evil. That's the problem with keeping them clumped up. I need to stop those liches. So it's the Archangel's turn, and one, the cool thing about Archangel is they can resurrect the dead, which is really useful for protecting your stacks of soldiers on longer boards. So as I mouse over the, the Marksman, it says at the bottom, resurrect the Marksman. So click on that, and I get some of my Marksman's back. Which uses his turn as well. And we win. And because we played that really carefully, which is the goal, um, I only lost one monk. I resurrected the two marksmen I had lost, uh, whereas he had lost a whole bunch. So if I was playing, if there's still more castles to conquer and stuff, I'm now in a much better position to continue going on to bigger and better targets because I didn't lose too much. And I get all of his um, trinkets. skills and blue's been vanquished and we have won the day so there is a quick game of heroes of my magic 3 like i said just one of my favorite games and so much content so much to do so much fun to be had it's just it's just fun it's a relaxing game to play it's got a great soundtrack um i just can't recommend this game enough hey it kind of got these different like score i have no clue because i've never really paid attention to the ending screen Gives you a rating with a creature at the end. Real funny, cute, and whatnot. You know, before I go, um, uh, a couple of other things. Uh, one about Heroes of Might and Magic. So, a lot, a lot of people don't know is that the store... So, Might and Magic, the role-playing game series I mentioned earlier, and Heroes of Might and Magic, they're actually set in the same universe. At least these, these games of this generation were. Uh, my details might be a little off, but from what I remember back in the day, uh, I want to say Might and Magic... Uh, six leads into Heroes of Might and Magic 2, which leads into Might and Magic 7, which leads into Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which leads into Might and Magic 8. You can look it up. I might be off by a game there. All of this, uh, you know, all of this is on Wikipedia somewhere these days. But uh, it's very interesting little tidbit. The stories in these games have never been Shakespeare uh, to any extent. None of these have been mind-blowing plot twists or anything like that. But if you're a stickler for story and details, it is kind of cool that up until a point, I think until Heroes of Might and Magic 4, these were all kind of one universe, uh, and they kind of went together. Now, Ubisoft took it over. I forget who made Heroes of Might and Magic 5. I guess I could always look that up, too. Um, but uh, when Ubisoft when Ubisoft took over for Heroes of Might and Magic 6, they, they kind of built a new universe there. Uh, and that's what you see in, like, My Magic uh, Clash of Heroes, which is a very excellent puzzly puzzle RPG game. Highly recommended. That might be one of the games on my list, actually. It wasn't originally a PC game, but uh, now it's on the PC, and that's a ton of fun. But, um... But a lot of these games, Might Magic, all the Might Magic series of RPGs are also available through GOG, so you can you can kind of go on there and look at those and, 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 and decide if you want to play all those uh, one after the other as well. I don't know if Might Magic 6 was on my list. Hey, we might be doing that one soonish as well. Let's just take a look to see what our next game is to kind of give you all a bit of a preview. Do, 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 do. All right. So let's see here. If I can get Tomb Raider working properly, <laughs> that would be a good one uh, to do next. Uh, oh, this is episode 12. Tomb Raider was one of my favorite games, but admittedly I played it on the PlayStation and not the PC, but it is really good. Well, our co-host has spoken. She wants to be on the lap. Uh, if not, it'll be Masters of Orion. Super, super awesome game. Uh, yeah, we will be doing My Magic later on. My Magic uh, 6, I believe, came out in 1998, so it's further down on the list. 
which makes sense. My so I think it's Mighty Magic Six led to I think that's why I said led to Mount Heroes of Might and Magic Three. Hmm. Hmm. Because it came out in 1998. Heroes of Might and Magic Three came out in 2000. So anyway, uh, we will we will see how that kind of all works out. But lots of exciting things coming up. That I hope I get to share with you. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, spending some time. Maybe you were playing some Heroes of Might and Magic 3 while you were watching me play Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which would be really, really cool. Uh, if you're a fan, let me know. Uh, also, a big shout out. Uh, Heroes, of, uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 has one of the best communities out there uh, by far. When the game was out, there was, and I forget which website it was, but there were uh, there there's a lot of uh, people that I was chit chatting with on forums and stuff. That was a website that was just around this game. Uh, lots of user made content, and as I mentioned before, a user meant a user made uh, expansion, uh, which I'm going to look up real fast. Uh, Wake of the Gods. Uh, you can Google that up, but that was created by uh, the community, and it's a massive modification. Uh, of the game just just adding a ton more that's there but you know a ton of, a ton of great uh, just content that's out there custom made maps and everything else and people are still talking about it working on this to this day if you pull up the website it comes right up uh it's uh, and people are still chit-chatting and going back and forth uh, it, it's just amazing uh, i'm on their mailing list and i still get emails they're wishing each other you know happy birthday and things like that uh 10 12 15 years later they're still uh, uh, talking about it, so it's it's just it's just you know it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Um, so uh, definitely uh, just check all this stuff out. And if you're a fan, hey, let me know. I'm a fan too. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this evening. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time on another episode of the Gamer's Experience. You happy? You happy, Minu? It's all about Minu's happiness. Say hi. Say say good night to everybody, Minu. Minu says good night. She waves her little paw at you. She's not very pleasant, but she says good night. <laughs>